I Mr. Heat Miser. I Miss I Mr. Nice Mr. I Mr. Snow. <laughs> I've been singing out at work lately and pissing off my coworkers. They're like, it's not Christmas. I'm like, I don't care. I like Christmas more than I like Halloween. And then they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I like Halloween. I just, it's not the number one holiday. What? It loses its mystique. It loses its mystique when you get older, in my opinion. Because I mean, I'm not as scared as I was when I was a child. I like Halloween now because I don't like, I mean, I don't like the, like the day itself, you know? Because mm. it's like, I don't know. It's. It's Halloween. Uh, I like the feeling in the air. I like the feeling in the air, but my favorite thing about Halloween, which is, you know, ties into this podcast, is now I just like sitting down on my free time in the month of October and just diving into horror movies, you know? Because it just, it feels right because everyone's already in the mood and I just like watching a bunch of horror movies. You know, I started early. I started a month early. Watch, started watching a bunch of horror movies in September. You know, just when fall started, I dove right in there. Uh, and now we're here in October. And uh, yeah, welcome back to Stack Episode 91. The kickoff episode to our third annual Halloween-a-thon. Our third Ooh. one. We've already done two of these. What the hell? Where'd time go? Um... Uh, Thank you all for joining us on this very, uh, on these next four episodes of very spooky, scary topics, uh, diving into horror and certain types of horror, you know, certain subgenres, little little themes, you know. We're gonna have some fun, fun times talking about uh, scary movies this month. Um, t- this week we're kicking it off with um, a pretty fun topic, you know. Um, we're talking about horror camp. Now, or camp horror, camp horror. Uh, I think camp horror is a big fundamental cornerstone of the horror genre. You know, because it's like, uh, it's basically horror that takes advantage of its in in how I interpret it, horror that takes advantage of its low budget and um, an amateur. I wouldn't say amateur filmmaking, uh, just low budget in filmmaking, and tries to make something that's just fun, uh, creative, and scary. Um, I don't think defining something as camp means it's like good. I have I have a couple movies on here that I say I wouldn't really like, but I think they're great camp horror movies, uh, and they're still fun to watch regardless of its quality. You know. Um, so I'm you excited would. to see what you guys what? I said you would. I would what? Yep. Okay. Um so I'm excited to see what you guys uh <laughs> have to pick. Chris, what was it like choosing camp horror for you guys cuz uh you know, it I I sent out a big list of our topics and that was one of the ones that stuck out to you the most, which is why we're doing it first. So, Camp Horror, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I um, I feel like for me, what made me want to do this topic is just, we've done horror comedies in the past, but I think horror, um, horror camp is something that often, like, those two things tend to, like, live and breathe off each other, but there is kind of a delineation there between them, and I feel like, and I feel like there's a distinction to be made there. Um, and yeah, I think I just had a couple of like cool camp horror films that I wanted to share with you guys because just because like some of them are just really corny and fun. Uh, and some of them are also just generally really good movies. So yeah, that's kind of just why I went for it. And my process was pretty simple. I just listed it out uh, however many I could, checked uh, which ones have been uh, stacked before and got rid of them and then just narrowed it down. It was pretty, it, this was actually a pretty simple list for me be, uh, also because a lot of the movie, a lot of the movies I would have picked, we've already chosen before. So my selection was definitely more limited, limited um, this time around. 
But uh, yeah, I, I have some movies um, that I don't think we've technically spoken about before. So yeah, I'm excited. How about you, Brandon? Um, horror camp, like you said, is intrinsically connected to the horror genre and sometimes is through horror comedy. But when I look at camp, I think it's like there are moments that are separate from the horror. Sometimes the horror and the comedy are tied together. Think any of Wes Craven's horror movies, specifically his slasher movies like Nightmare on Elm Street and the Scream movies, which tie the horror and comedy together in specific sequences. Whereas I feel like a movie that is campy can have horrific moments and then have a separate like section, which is kind of goofy and fun, you know, and it acknowledges that. And it doesn't necessarily need to be like comedically driven. Like it doesn't need to be like, oh, this is for comedy. It's just right. that's the tone of the movie. You know, the movie's tone has to be that way or it just is because of the concept and direction. So that's what I was yeah. thinking. It's got to be like somewhat absurdly like exaggerated in how it's presented, you know, which can be like comedic. Um, <laughs> sorry, but also I don't know. Uh, just, just bombastically fun and sort of strung together by just people trying to make something, uh, you know, out of the box, and that's what we're gonna explore today. Um. So before we do that, let's run over the rules. The first episode of Halloween Thon. Once week, once a week, we set the topic or theme and go our separate ways to construct our own three film stack. <laughs> Peter Rory is coming in to address the show. <laughs> then after a week, we come back here on the podcast and share our own stacks, one film at a time. Then at the end of the show, we will mix and match our nine films to make the ultimate decision on what quintessential three film stack. We are checking out of this hypothetical video store. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm up first, baby, with, um, you know, one of the... This was my first first pick when I thought about camp and horror. Um, I watched this film for the first time uh, in a small... There's a small town by my cabin in Utah um, called... It's called Bicknell, and it's uh every year they used to do a so like a movie uh, like a so bad it's good film festival called the Bicknell International Film Festival, um and one year they did one about aliens, um and y'all know how I feel about aliens, scary fuckers, um one of my biggest fears, um so I had to choose this so bad it's good movie, which I don't even think is so bad it's good. I just think it's um. I just think it's camp and I think it's, I think it's really fun camp. Um, I wouldn't even say this is a bad movie. It's just a really fun one. Um, that is killer clowns from outer space. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. This, this movie is sort of getting like a resurgence in popularity lately. Yeah. I noticed um, that recently for some reason. It's getting its own. It has a maze. At, it has a maze yeah, at Horror Nights. Yeah. There's yeah. It has a, uh, it's on Horror Nights maze. Yeah. Um, and when I went to when I went to the city walk the other day, I saw like there's a bunch of killer clowns from outer space merchandise, and I'm like, this was a very like cult movie up until recently. You know, I didn't know much people who knew about this film, um, so I'm I'm happy to see that it's sort of getting this uh, resurgence in you know in the spotlight as being something that's not so bad it's good but camp rather. Um, so the plot follows. I mean. You get you get the gist. They're killer clowns. They're from outer space. Um, this spaceship that looks like a circus tent lands on Earth, and these clowns sort of like, uh, they they come out to kill people with cotton candy guns and like basically suck their blood. They're it's almost like vampires, where they live off the blood of other humans, and they like they shoot these guns that wrap them up in like these cotton candy co cocoon sacks that are kind of like, uh you know, from aliens when the people are like in the walls and they harvest eggs. It's like kind of that level of like body horror. Um, but it's in cotton candy. And um the whole movie is just like these clowns just like going around and like doing like these different clown tricks, but with like a horror uh like science fiction twist to it all. Um 
they look absolutely terrifying if you've looked at them like they're really gross the makeup and like the makeup of these clowns and like the puppeteering is really good um for 1988 i think it still holds up a lot um it's got a really cool like poppy uh punk soundtrack to it um you know synth and yeah if you if you guys have any of you guys seen killer clowns from outer space nope no, no, I didn't even I didn't even know what it was about. I've just seen the poster. Yeah, I've seen oh, the poster yeah. a bunch, and just like just the name, I I recognize, but largely I don't know what this movie's about. It's such a fun watch. I was gonna I was gonna try to find it for our movie night tonight, uh, but it's not on any streaming services, unfortunately, uh, that we mm. could do a watch party. But um, I highly recommend it. What have you guys heard just from the poster? Is that all you've heard from it? That's literally it. Not yeah. not a, not even a word about like what the story is. At least for, I, for me, I'm sure I've seen a few images from it, but like for the most part, this film has been shrouded in mystery as just this weird looking horror film. With I think, does it have like stop motion effects, or is it like little costumes, or what's like what's going on here, or is it puppetry? There, there's some stop motion, and it's like yeah, it's I think it's like puppetry. You know, there's like people wearing these big clown suits um with they just looked like these disgusting overly detailed it's almost like a close-up on a red and stimpy like cartoon if someone did a, like a gross close-up of a clown that's what they look like um and they just have awful teeth and big heads and giant mouths um and it's just it's super creative like how like the main characters figure out how to stop them and everything um i can just you can just tell that like the people who made this had such a fun time um and i definitely recommend you guys check it out i kind of want to get it on blu-ray uh because it's it's like one of those you know it's like one of those fun movies that you guys would just put on a party and you know people just like heckle and like just have a good time with you know um yeah killer clowns from outer space that's my number one baby let's move on to brandon yep what's your first camp movie camp horror all right So I wanted to take the concept literally at first. So I'm picking the most modern film I could think that captures camp. And also it's set at a camp. So (laughs) I'm picking. I knew someone was going to try this. (laughs) <laughs> I'm picking I'm picking the final girls, uh 2015 horror film. Oh. Um so Tell this me about movie the Final Girls. This movie was made for 4.5 million dollars. Another theme you're going to see is you're not going to see like a big budget movie on here. You're going to th- see like 5 10 million dollar features. Um maybe a 20 million dollar feature, we'll see. Um, but basically, this is about a bunch of horror film fans who go to see a film at a theater, like a re-release of something like a Friday the 13th movie. And there's a fire at the theater and they walk through the screen to try to get away from it. But behind the screen, they're transported back in time and into the world of the slasher film that they were watching. Um, So so it stars Mon Ackerman. To, uh, Thaisa Farmiga, Adam Devine, Thomas Middletich, Nina Dobrev, Alexander Ludwig, Aliyah Shaquat, Shak- Shak- I think is how you pronounce it. Um, all like these uh, famous either teen stars or comedic actors of the modern day. And so on one side, you have this very over the top, like 80s slasher film a la Friday the 13th that plays into the camp of those films where it's like highly sexualized. Um, and you know playing with those tropes that you would see in slapper slasher films and then you on the other side you do have a more serious side story about uh the daughter of the star seeing her mother who passed away shortly after making the movie uh trying to reconnect with a fictionalized version of her mother in this universe uh so it's very campy and uh over the top it's not super serious, but it has its moments. And I think it does play into not only the camp genre because of its tone, but also because it takes place at a camp, like a sleepaway camp or something like that. The movie the movie they go to see is literally called Camp Bloodbath. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um I think Chris, when didn't we watch clips from this movie when we were in our horror class when we were talking about horror comedies? This sounds so familiar. We, 
We might have. I actually, when I was doing research for this, uh, for this stack, like this movie kept coming up, and I was like, I've never even heard of this. Um, yeah, it seems really cool. I really like the, uh, just like the, like just the concept of like taking this like almost like like laughably like conventional formula and completely just flipping it, um, and just having having like just having a ball with it, especially knowing that this movie was made for a pretty a relatively low budget is pretty impressive. I find I I always find like um especially like these level of like comedies like I find like almost like the limitation of budget almost encourages more creativity especially in these kinds of films. Um and yeah, it's I like this sounds really fun. The poster also is dope. Definitely yeah. a callback of that 80s nostalgia. I love them mm. ripping out of the poster. Um that's awesome. It's like it's sort of like a it's postmodern camp if you think about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, postmodern camp parody. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Very nice. Very mm-hmm. nice. Alrighty, we got some good picks so far. Chris, what is your first camp cool. movie? All right, my first movie is a movie from what year is this? 1974. Uh, I'm gonna be going in uh, year order. Um, <laughs> yes, chronological. Correct. Name um, of year. Yeah. um and so this is a movie i saw back in high school and just loved it this is a very this was my film teacher in high school's favorite comedy ever made um but it's also a horror film it's a uh, mel brooks's young frankenstein oh so realizing camp. i haven't even logged on Larybox. yes it is very campy it's a good um, movie. yeah this is a really fun one uh, for anyone who doesn't know uh young frankenstein tells the story of a uh, neurosurgeon who is the uh, grandchild of uh, the famous Dr. Victor von Frankenstein, um, who uh, inherits the castle where he created the monster. Uh, in there, he meets a couple of very colorful characters. There's an elderly uh, person, an elderly, like a, what's the word, butler, like housekeeper, I guess, um, a lab assistant, and a hunchback. And um, it's just like, it's a really big cacophony of like these really fun characters just ditching, basically just dicking around for a couple of hours on, uh, you know, in this castle. And, uh, you know, and there's this whole story of the, of young Frankenstein, fi- and also young Frankenstein being the name of the, the neurosurgeon, uh, where he, he believes that his grandfather was this delusional, um, like, uh, what's the word, like senile guy, but uh, when he discover rediscovers the book that uh, details the the experiment, uh, things kind of take a turn there, and I'm going to leave that to you guys to find out about if you watch this movie. Um, it's a very fun movie, extremely tight, very well around. Um, it's one of those movies that like the runtime, the one time is one time, the runtime <laughs> is 106 minutes, and it is surprisingly brisk. Um, I feel like you, you like this movie feels maybe 85 to me. I'd say around there. Uh, it it is a very brisk film, um, yeah. And the jokes are really fun. It's a nice balance of like that kind of in, like intelligent humor, but also like a lot of like fun like like slapstick humor, which I really enjoy. Um, I love just watching these characters interact with each other, but also like on on both like a dialogue and like uh, physical level. I think they're just every, all the performers are so fun. Uh, Gene Hackman, sorry, Gene Hackman, Gene Wilder <laughs> plays. Uh, plays a uh, young Frankenstein and I think he is fantastic. I actually like him uh, as young Frankenstein much more than I like him as Willy Wonka, uh, which I might be a hot take, but oh. yeah. Um, have you both seen this movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. One of my Any dad's favorites. On this one? Brandino. It's one of my dad's favorites. So one of the things about growing up in the household was this was always on the TV during the mm. spooky time. Uh, I don't think I really got the humor when I was growing up because it is kind of meta poking fun at horror films and those universal monsters movies from the 30s. Mm -hmm. But also like I think there is actually a very touching story, much like Frankenstein, the original that I I, I think permeates. It is very campy, you know, any Mel Brooks parody film kind of is. Uh, and I like how it plays with the genre and the styling of it, putting in black and white. I forget if it's in four by three or not, but if they're paying homage, I would assume so. I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. 
But Gene Wilder is great here. I, I think he's better in Willy Wonka, but I'm just a Willy Wonka fan. So that's just me. Uh, you, Brandon's Willy Wonka bias comes out yet again. Uh, you know, <laughs> what can I say? He, I like chocolate. Yeah, you can if you if we had the the, the webcams on and the YouTube video, you, you just, he's got Wonka bars stacked throughout his room. He's just a shill for the Wonka company. Uh, you know, he defends the the, the slavery of the uh, the Oompa Loompas. You know. They want to be there, right, Brandon? It's not slavery. They want to be there. I uh, I wouldn't defend. The, I don't know if he pays them or if they have adequate health care insurance. I would assume so. If you if you rewatch if you if, if you if you rewatch the 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 remake, they do have a ward in, for their in or an infirmary for those animatronics you get burned. So I'd assume that he would have adequate. The doctors come in and take care of them of the loopas you know that he he's given them a place to live <laughs> got food mm, you know, yeah i got food probably. candy yeah and like who cares if he tests experiments on them for the candy <laughs> like the hair <laughs> yeah come on it's not it's not guys it's not slavery just come on it's not uh, it's not i think we no. got to get ahead of it i Young Frankenstein is such a fun movie. Um, I'm a big Gene Wilder fan, especially because my uh, gym teacher always called me Gene Wilder in high school. Because you look like him? Yeah. Um, so I've always had so that sort of connection to him. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a very good parody of a very classic film and, and story. The first science fiction story ever, like, found and recorded um mary shelley's frankenstein um so it plays a lot of riffs on sort of that timeless story um with you know little mel brooks isms you know if you've seen blazing saddles history of the world part one you know you know he's known for like you know uh if his version of parody seems like his own thing you know it's not like airplane or naked gun or even like some of the newer stuff you know um mm. uh but like his movies like you know this and space balls and everything like that it's very uh i don't know it's it's very poignant and very i feel like it's uh also very industry based you know his like his parodies you know he very he, like mm. he likes to talk about like the business of movies in these you know especially like frankenstein as a performer in this one Frankenstein is performer and like if you look at like Blazing Saddles and you know when it's like the ending the, the black cowboy and the and the ending or like in Star Wars and they talk about merchandising and stuff you know um that's just what makes his parody stand out from the rest of the genre and uh yeah it this is perfect camp you know it's it's gothic uh, of course like the original Frankenstein but it also has like you know um musical comedy to it which is great um I don't know I, I feel like this is a hard film to dislike, you know? I feel like there's a little something for everybody in Young Frankenstein, which is why I love that it's on this list. Alrighty, let's go into second round here. Round two. Round two. Now, um, this is where I start to go into movies that I think are quite bad, but um, are enjoyable as hell to watch because of their mm -hmm. camp. Um. This is a movie I showed you too. I think we watched this for a movie night once. Um, oh God! It's a 1982 film. Uh, I'm picking Basket Case as my second. Camera. Oh my God! This movie. <laughs> Not a very good movie. You're right. <laughs> Not a very good movie, it, but it's funny as hell to watch. It is an abominable camera. movie. I think that's the best word I can use to describe it. How do I describe Basket Case? Um don't so if you're unaware of the film the film uh the movie follows uh this man who comes into the big city with his with his big basket nothing else besides the big basket everyone's like what's in the basket what's in the basket um and you s soon start to uh you know find out that this man uh had a conjoined twin when he was a kid and uh had to get it removed uh 
because the twin was just horrifying. Uh, you know, it looked like it was struggling to stay alive. Um, so the doctor removed it. And since then, uh, the kid and this disgusting lump of flesh with arms, eyes, and a mouth sort of they have like the psychic bond so they can communicate to each other and they go on a revenge quest to kill all the people involved in separating them um <laughs> so of course the main feature of this film is uh the man in the basket his name is belial that's one thing i'll never forget uh and it's this really disgusting flesh like little you know gumdrop person uh with sharp teeth and like red eyes and uh i i just think this is great camp because it has like the camp of like like the city life in the 80s you know out on the streets uh you get to see all the uh eccentric characters that sort of occupy that space um that have become uh caricatures in 80s films you know um and then you just have like this really fun uh bad but fun slasher of this little little like little flesh man like tearing people to shreds for some reason he's incredibly strong even though he's just like a mound of flesh with arms so he can like climb up walls and shit and like tear people in half and like rip them to shreds it's never it's never explained why but um you know i feel like basket case has its place in history as this really weird campy horror film uh that has gone on to spawn much greater horror films. You know, I feel like one of the biggest influences of Basket Case is uh, Malignant. It is a very yeah. similar. I was film about to say yeah to Basket Case, um, and I don't know. It's just I remember being so intrigued by this film when I found it out, and then a friend of the show Sellers bought it for me on Blu-ray, and. Uh, for Christmas, and I remember watching it in my basement one day over Christmas break in college, and then I came back and I was like, I have to show you guys this fucking weird movie, and we watched it. And what do you guys think of Basket Case now that I showed it to you all those years ago? <sighs> not very I, good. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. Um, uh, I okay. I'm, when it comes to movies like this that have like. I, even though I might not have seen it like all that long ago, I mean, okay, 2018, that was kind of actually kind of long ago now that I think about it. Um, Holy fuck, yeah. God, 20, end of 2018. Okay, anyway, sorry, I'm getting off topic. Um, so, yeah, I'm reading my old review now, and it says, that was, yeah, that was bad. Granted, only half my brain was paying attention, but just from <laughs> that, I can tell you that this film had very little of any effort put into it. Um, yeah, so I, I was not particularly kind to this movie, but I will say at the at the end of my review, I did say that it's a good time. It's a good time movie with friends just to watch the stupidity unfold. Um, but we watched yeah, this in I, November. <laughs> yeah, didn't what do didn't we watch something else th on the same day? I feel like we did. We probably did, but yeah. Anyway, um, Basket Case is a pretty big mess of a film, but it is a it is a pretty interesting film just for it's. Uh, I think the best thing I can say about this film is its creature effects. Is this the right? Is this the movie with that blob looking thing? Yeah, yeah he's got the, he's or, the blob with the arms. Yeah, he's just like that, that goes like yeah. black, like blob walking yeah. through the. Yeah, <laughs> it is okay. I will say they did a well, good job Uncle with creating Boone that uh, with the prosthetics for that creature because that looked great. Um, I just think in a better film that would have worked way better. Um, but you know, I'm glad that uh, I'm very glad to see that um. You know, this film does exist, and I'm glad that, uh, I mean, assuming it's true, James Wan took influence from it, because Malignant fucking rocks. Um, maybe it just needed a couple years for that concept to sit before it took flight. Uh, Brandon, do you have anything to add to Basket Game? <laughs> um, I, I think I was reading a tweet today by C. Robert Cargill, who's the writer of The Black Phone, and, like, he That's loves strange. horror films. Yeah, Doctor Strange. He works with Scott Derrickson often. Uh, he's like a prominent voice in the horror community, or he's becoming one because of his his work in horror, but also his uh, analysis of the genre. And he was tweeting today about how like horror ages differently than any other genre does, and mm. as such, can get kind of reappraised differently as time goes on. Like a bad horror movie in the '80s is now a cult classic today. 
uh, case in point basket case, which doesn't really have a low average rating on letterbox. Like that's a 3.3 and the rating curve is pretty positive. I'd say most people would give it like a three out of five or higher. And while we think it's pretty terrible for like, maybe I, I said it in my review, like the acting is porno level acting, like not very good, (laughs) very flat. (laughs) Uh, And like, yeah it's pretty run-of-the-mill but like you're right the creature effects are pretty great it's a really out there concept and you know if you look at like companies like shout factory the criterion collection um trying to think kino all three of those studios put out like horror films or old cult classics on blu-ray and this was one of them so they obviously did it for a reason and it's a camp cult classic for that reason you know and, and it also resembles early Peter Jackson and it's very slapsticky nature. Yeah. And in sort of like the prosthetics, you know, because Peter Jackson loved yeah. to play with that bizarre makeup and everything. Bad Which taste, I think is like, meet the feebles. Yeah, I feel like that's like a big part of 80s horror camp is like people just trying to make the most disgusting freaks they could, you know? Yeah. Um, With the prosthetics and stuff because, I mean, you can talk like the movie Freaks, Society. um wax museum is that what it's called there's like a wax museum or something like that I've people could say they're exploitative but i think that's the filmmakers in a sandbox playing with whatever they want yeah. physically to make something like unique i think just makeup effects like got to a peak in the 80s and it became really accessible uh so like low budget films could have like these not looking that great all that you know, all that great, but stylistically and cannot like hire the best talent to execute these bizarre stories, but they could have sequences with these insanely good effects, you know, uh, mm-hmm. because people with these limited budgets were just cre- like finding out really creative ways to like create these freaks and monsters that they concocted in their brains at the time, you know, um, which I really give credit to. I feel like that's something we're really missing. Um, in the modern day, but I feel like it it has sort of started to get a resurgence. I'm ta- like with films like Malignant, or maybe you know, uh, another film that came out you know a couple months ago that I don't want to spoil. Uh, but that that mm, had some yeah. you know freakish makeup in it, and I just like I've been saying this for years. Bring back the freaks. I feel like freaks <laughs> died when Dobby died in you know Deathly Hallows <laughs> Part One. That was like the end of the freaks, you know, because you had Gollum before that, and then you had all these freaks before. But once the little elf freak was gone, you know, what what happened to the freaks? Bring back more freaks. You know what I'm saying? You like Hashtag freaks. Hashtag bring huh? back the freaks. I love freaks. I want to see the movie Freaks. No, it's called Freaks. It's good. I, I know. I've seen the movie Freaks, the, old, the 40s film. But there's another movie uh, starring... Uh, Alex Winters, and he's like, there's like a, he's like surrounded by a bunch of freaks. I don't know, I forgot what the movie's called, but I want to see it. That looks camp. Anyways, Basket Case, good freak movie. Uh, Chris, it's rocking to number two. All right, I'm gonna Wait. hit you guys with a movie that my mom showed me when I was a kid, and it scarred the shit out of me. Uh, this is nice. probably one of the actually, this might well be one of my first experiences with horror as a genre. Uh, I have not revisited this since I was a kid. But I do remember, like, recontextualizing the movie from my memory. It is, a, it, it is indeed a, uh, a camp film. And I checked online. It is, uh, I, the other people share the same opinion. Um, this is a film directed by, I'm probably going to butcher this, John Colette Serra from 2005. It is House of Wax. Uh, this is a second remake of this title i believe i think this is a second remake or a first yes and um, i was talking about house of wax earlier i said wax museum i was talking about the 80s wax the museum. original version okay yeah, there house you go of wax yeah was the yes. other one the one with k and nicole kidman mm-hmm. or is that a, do i get the house of wax and the others Wait. mixed up there's so i think they all have different titles movies. yeah I was thinking of the movie Waxwork, not House of Wax. I was thinking of the movie Waxwork, I, which is about a House of Wax. <laughs> but that has a bunch of freaks in it. But I was not talking about House of Wax. I guess The Others mm-hmm. isn't about wax either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> guess a bunch um, of wax movies. Also, before you continue, Chris, uh, I accidentally skipped Brandon in the order because I was looking at your name. 
but fuck you. I'm sorry. Uh, I, it's really hot in here. I'm gonna go turn on a no. fan. Uh, so let's continue with you. We'll go back to Baron, then we'll go back to the order in the next round. Sorry, okay, Brandon. sounds good. Okay, continue. Okay, I'll make this quick. Don't worry. There's not much for me to say here because this movie's kind of ass. Um, okay, House of Wax tells the story of a group of really dumb teenagers uh, who find their way, who stumble their way into a really mysterious wax museum, and horrors unfold. Um, it is a very schlocky film. Uh, it's you know obviously an early two thousands. Uh, you know, horror film, B movie level. I'm talking like, you know, anyone seen the movie Hollow Man on Sci Fi? You guys heard of yes, that? Yes, Kevin, Bacon, Kevin movie. Bacon. I watched yeah. that when I was a kid. And I was like, like, this movie's so stupid. <laughs> like th- that, this movie is like maybe just one league below that film in terms of like like production quality, like caliber and whatnot. This movie is very schlocky. Um, but I will say the practical effects and like the genuine, like the kind of horror that you see in this film does make up for a pretty non-existent plot. There's very little going on here other than the literal teenagers enter a house of wax and brutal shit happens. Um, yeah, it is a pretty terrible film, um, but it is fun for the aspect that is, you know, just like the quote-unquote spectacle i guess of seeing what happens the poster is also pretty cool it's very intriguing um yeah you know it's it is a it's the most run-of-the-mill horror film you'll ever find but i will say the i think what kind of ties into the basket case thing you know it's there's like an a a, like an acute awareness of what they're making here that kind of gives it this like unexpected charm and in that same vein it is just kind of a fun movie to watch just to, you know, behold. This movie, uh, I'm looking at a review that uh, on Letterboxd. It's a, someone said, this is basically what happened if the Scooby-Doo gang was utterly incompetent and they all die. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's House of Wax. Very meh of a movie, but can be a lot of fun if you're just looking for a, a very schlocky B-horror B movie. Um I don't think either of you have seen this film, uh, but would encourage if you're looking for that. But other than that, stay away. But I just want to put it out there because nobody ever fucking talks about this movie. Uh, Brandon, I stole your turn. Take it back. Uh, I mean, I, the idea of wax museums aren't scary to me, but the concept of a haunted wax museum with living wax figures is cool. I like that idea. I read this book when I was growing up or called Kingdom Keepers, which was if like all the Disney animatronics came to life. Oh, I remember that. And I remember liking that a lot. And yeah. I like the idea of like dis not like things that you know from like appearance come to life and like kill you. Mm. That's kind of cool. I will uh uh if I if I may, um that is actually not the the twist of the film. It's not uh wax figures are alive. Oh. Well, it's uh wax figures are made of humans oh that's cool and, Ooh. you know you can imagine what happens when you know they get touched you know what i'm saying yeah um yeah anyway but yeah no that is cool brandon i mean i guess that in a weird well, way well i mean that, conceptually that your concept is kind of like a demented version of like night of, night of the museum yeah i like that uh yeah. but also i work at nosberry farm it's well documented right. and one of the mazes is wax works which is follows like these wax figures that or yeah. these people that are made into wax figures like this movie. So it's like a embodiment of that. Just got a plug, you know, come to not scary farm Thursdays through Sunday. There you go. Uh, and go in that maze. Got to rep the brand, you know, Brandon gets paid a little extra once he drops those, you know, once he drops those little ads. And so do we. <laughs> Thanks for sponsoring us. Knott's Berry farm. Uh, just kidding. You don't sponsor us, but uh, it's pause uh yeah this sounds really actually pretty cool you know joan clutt sarah big fan can't wait for black adam this is the director of black adam made this movie and jungle cruise you know this director's so powerful he can bring the moon back you know in his movies <laughs> he brought it back so, <laughs> i tr- i trust i trust that house of wax is a good time <laughs> you know the ratings yeah. are all over the place so that's always that's oh my always god fun this this dude has directed so many Liam Neeson movies. Are these even related? I have no. Look idea. at his filmography on. Uh, look and at his filmography on. Liam Neeson's making look like the them. same pose in all of them. 
He's holding yeah. a gun and looking to the right. The commuter, unknown, run all night, nonstop. Nonstop. Oh, I've seen it. It's okay. Jungle Cruise. Oh my god. Bad. What a crazy uh, director. Anyways, yeah, um, good pick, Chris. Eclectic. <laughs> that's that's definitely wax, you know. That's definitely wax. It's definitely camp. Uh, Brandon, we skipped you. Go ahead. What's your second pick? Pause before we continue. I did restart my recording, uh, but it stopped briefly. But I started it almost immediately after it stopped. Just let okay. you know. Make so a note. Okay. It's so you'll, you'll it's have, around. You'll have two parts. Two files. No, it's work. gonna be in one. It's gonna be in one file. But it's going to be the 37 minute mark. Somewhere okay. around there. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. I don't even have that many tabs. <laughs> um, <laughs> if anyone so, doesn't know, Brandon, Brandon is infamous for. What is. Do you, do you happen to know what your record number of tabs is? Like, not like, even as a joke, like, genuinely? Like, probably like around 50. Oh, my Lord. Jesus Christ. But I don't do that anymore. I'm trying not to do that. The Ram. The Ram. <laughs> uh, hey. All right. I'll fix that. All right. Brandon, go all right, second. Brandon, pick. hit us. All right. You can, this is the first time this fucker's making an appearance on this podcast. Uh, he has to be on here. Leprechaun 3. Hey, I knew oh. it. I knew, I knew you were going to pick a Leprechaun <laughs> movie. As soon as I heard Camp War, I was like, absolutely, Brandon, pick a Leprechaun <laughs> film. So... I notoriously watched all of these films for <laughs> an internship and I got COVID after I finished them all. The and not only Chris. that, I bought all of them except for the newest one because they came in a collection. And so, and I picked the best Leprechaun movie. I'm picking Leprechaun 3 in Vegas, as it's also known. Uh, basically, the first two films are like shitty slasher movies that take place in like rural or suburban america and then leprechaun 3 sees him going to vegas because he's summoned to this shop because he gets a golden medallion and so he has this medallion and then somebody in vegas steals it or doesn't steal it but essentially is like it's stuck in this pawn shop somewhere and they these there are these magic coins that somebody stole from him or and all these people are like stealing these coins and they give them whatever they want. So there are these wishes that they get that come true, but don't come true to their liking always. So there's always a catch to the wish, whatever wish you make. And that's like one of those stories, the watch what you wish for stories. And not only that, it's a campy slasher movie whenever it stars Warwick Davis. And this is the first one to really like err on the side of comedy. Um, because the first two are entrenched in the horror genre and they have comedic elements, but this one, it's fully embracing that this is a silly character. He's in Vegas. So there's always that emphasis on the more stingy, uh, people in Vegas and, or very <laughs> greedy and affluent people in Vegas. Yeah. And as such, you just see this little guy running around messing things up for everyone. And it's great. Uh, it's the effects in it are very camp akin to like something like basket case very practical effects on some of the kills they're very out there too and seeing the main character transform into a different creature is quite interesting because wow. let's just say one of the characters starts to turn into a leprechaun throughout the movie it's like a werewolf movie oh, so God. it's very that sounds wild. horrifying that like, sounds like when you got covid <laughs> you slowly turn into I was a like, leprechaun no <laughs> <laughs> it's just my leprechauns go <laughs> let my leprechauns go it's wow. just crazy um i've only seen the first leprechaun film um and it's I remember I watched it, and then Brandon watched all of them shortly after, and I've I've honestly been scared to revisit them because you know I haven't gotten COVID yet, but uh, vaccinated, not, it's cool. Not 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 playing, you know, not dancing with the devil into several shoes here, you know. I want to start. I want to stay safe. Uh, 
maybe once I get my, you know, my Omicron booster, I'll I'll watch uh, the, the Leprechaun movies. But I do, I do want to see this one out of all the others. I think because you you've just been praising it the most out of them, them all, and like having the Leprechaun in the Las Vegas setting does like that does intrigue me more so than him in space or in the hood. Um, the space one's unwatchable. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> is there really one that's called Leprechaun in the Hood? There's yeah. two. There's two. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, wow. Okay. It's Leprechaun, leprechaun into, in and then there's Leprechaun back to the Hood, but with two, where instead of two, T.O. Does he have a crossover with the boys in the Hood? Uh, well, I- Ice T's in it. Well, uh, there you go. <laughs> or is it Ice Cube? One of the Ices is in it. Damn. I don't know which one. Of, of ice. <laughs> Have you seen the picture of uh, a glass of tea, but it's Ice T's face, and then a bunch of ice cubes in it, and there's just ice cubes. Face. Okay, yeah, I was right. It's Ice T. It's, it's too. It's uh, it's below. It's below Ice Cube to do this movie. <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah, Leprechaun Three sounds really fun. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, does sound fun. I mean, like the Leprechaun. Fan- how many? How many movies are there, Brandon? nine oh lord um, i'm pretty yeah, sure it's I, either eight or nine <laughs> yeah i feel like you know in any in any uh nine entry uh horror franchise there's bound to be a golden nugget somewhere in there and uh yeah it's the third one apparently um yeah i have never seen a leprechaun film the um, I, I i'm very curious like because like just because like i've never seen any of these i'm very curious how they make this leprechaun scary I mean, of course, the creature uh, makeup and effects look fantastic. Uh, but I'm like, how do you make this thing scary? Because I'm wondering, like, is it like Chucky? Because this thing's kind of small. Like, is it, is it like that? Like, but because like every time I look at Chucky, there's a small part of me that's like, why don't you just pick it up and just like punt that thing? Like, it's so <laughs> tiny. But like, well, the thing is, is the characters do punt the leprechaun, but he's just in, in, he's just in respect, like indestructible in these movies he's like michael myers he's just not scary like the the scariest thing they do with him is the, with the lighting and the warwick davis makeup because mm. it is crazy I like, like that. Fr- he has layers dude flabby layers happy <laughs> l- flabby Flab- little layers look at him running around little layers man uh yeah i want to check this out I feel like Leprechaun's the next franchise I kind of want to die. Next horror franchise. I want to well, have them all on Blu ray. I know you do. Um, so I kind of want to. I at least want to watch the next two. I don't know if I'll dive into them all. Um, <laughs> Alrighty. Let's get into the final round here. Um, I'm starting or ending my stack. I should say, not starting. I'm starting the final round, ending my stack with uh, a film. That I saw with my dear friend Brandon and a friend of the show, Joey. Uh, a film that is... I, I, I would call this camp. I would absolutely call this camp and how it's executed in its vision, in its divisiveness. And I think it will gain a cult status uh, in the years to come. I am picking M. Night Shyamalan's Old. Oh, is my last I missed film. this one. I think I think old has old has some crazy decisions that I never thought I would see in a film. Uh, if you like movies where he's where M Night Shyamalan is focusing on the space to the right side of your head and above your shoulder. That's mainly where the focus is on in films. I don't know why he blocks characters in the frame that way. Um, I don't like it. The acting is kind of horrible, even though it has some really great actors. Uh, there's a character named Midsize Sedan in the movie. Um, and just the concept is so... <laughs> there's a character named Midsize Sedan. Wait, you haven't seen it? He's, like... <laughs> he's a he's rapper. A, he's a famous rapper in this world. That gets trapped on the beach that turns you old. I mean, that the, that concept alone is camp. It's so campy. People get trapped on a beach that turns you old. And granted, the the 
the classic M. Night Shyamalan twist is pretty garbage, I would say. Um, but it is just so funny watching these fuckers turn old. Um, and it leads to actually a, a pretty scary moment, I would say. Um, one that ev- like, evicted the same sense I watch, uh, I get from reading like a comic by Junji Ito, if you're familiar with the mangaka. Um, if you know the scene, you know it. Uh, it's in like a cave, Brandon. Remember? Yep, I know what it is. It's okay. when they like. Well, Chris, I don't. Do you want me to? No. Yeah, okay. It's well, a surprise. I think it's. A, well, think then it's... why are you asking me? I don't know. I'm just asking you to remember. Right, do you want validation from me? Is that what this yes, is? Yes, I want validation. You know, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I, just, I want you to like me. Why don't you like me? Um, I do like you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's like the scariest moment of the movie, but it's uh, it's just I don't know. Uh, it's funny that the concept of people turning old really fast is that. Listen, at face value, if that happened to me, that would be genuinely terrifying. But to watch that happen to other people, it's pretty funny. I don't know. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> if I was on the old beach, I'd be scared as fuck. But on paper, it's really funny. And uh, I think this movie is camp for it. Uh, because M. Night just gets to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Uh, experiment just with weird things. Uh, Dutch angles everywhere. Uh weirdly focusing on p- places in the frame that uh you know other directors wouldn't um and other cinematographers would be like are you out of your mind don't do that i don't know um but i think it's camp it's bad but it's fun uh, i had a good time watching this with brandon and joey brandon what do you think um oh Oh. Yeah, I guess. Mm. That's a, I don't know. Right. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's like, hmm. it's entertaining. I have it. I have it, because I, I think it is a perfect movie night movie. Uh, um, If you are just with a bunch of friends and you need something to watch, I think it certainly goes up there as like one of those movies that you can just put on. And have a good time, whether you partake in alcohol or in drugs or anything. Because it's entertaining enough to the point that you could have a good time watching it. Um, if sober or if you're drunk. But it's not a good movie. Like, I think, I personally think the concept is interesting. Because it's original. Uh, some people think it's stupid. Uh, I don't know who that would be. <laughs> Me. Yeah, I know. It's but uh, <laughs> no, it's no, it's 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 cool. It's like imagine if. It's like a what if scenario. Yeah, but it's funny. Okay. It wouldn't be. Funny I don't if think it that... happened to me, but if it happens to other people, I think it's funny. I think it's funny that M Night did the movie like this and had his actors give these performances because. It seems intentional because the the main Gail Garcia Bernal is a great actor. He is. He's so he's terrific. Um, I I don't really know any of the other actors, but I know I mean Thomas and Mackenzie's pretty good. Uh, Alex Wolf is really good. Like, but any of the adult actors, yeah. yeah like, I'm not saying I know them really well, but I I've known that they do okay work. But the line delivery in this awful which is maybe why camp classic fits it best you know it's yeah. gonna have that status someday it's somebody it's gonna be forgotten by time give it i don't know like 20 30 years yeah and maybe 10 because this the cycle of social media and one day they'll they're gonna people are gonna turn it on and they're gonna be like what is this what is this m night movie i've never heard about and then they're gonna love it yeah i think so too it's like malignant mm-hmm Chris, from yes. what you've heard of old, have you seen it? I have not. It is on HBO Max, correct? I think. I think so. Yeah. I think it's on something. It's on something. I um, have it, so I can let it Blu-ray show. <laughs> what do you think of old, from what you've heard? <laughs> uh, love the concept. I think it's a lot of fun. Very Shyamalanian. That's what I like to call this film. Shyamalanian. <laughs> um, 
yeah, seems like a lot of fun. Um, seems like a concept that he can run with. Um, as far as the execution, I have heard. I remember. Okay, here's the thing. I remember someone telling me the ultimate twist of this film, like it being this whole thing. But like, I'm gonna leave it there because thing is, I actually kind of forgot because I'm not 100 sure what it is anymore. Um, but I'm excited, so I think that'll be fun. Um, I just haven't seen it myself, but. You know, Shyamalan films are either terrible or surprisingly fun and good. So I'm hopeful that this is uh, in the latter uh, camp. Camp. Eh. But yeah, I'm sold on it. Hell yeah. All right, Brandon, let's get back into the order here. What is your last camp horror? So we have talked about this movie before on the podcast, um, but I could not not pick this movie and it was between this and day of the dead and i know chris hasn't seen it so that's not his pick Mm -hmm. uh but i'm not going with day of the dead i'm going with the frighteners by peter jackson i almost picked this one i came very close to picking this one i think we've now all seen it since you talked about it yeah because i we had a movie night right Yeah. yeah um so basically this is the story of a of a con man like person who could a medium like a guy who could speak to ghosts who's basically living on the outskirts of society and cons people into thinking they have ghosts in their house so he has a job and can pay for bills and whatnot when he can actually see ghosts and they can actually haunt um however he's confronted with like a mass murderer grim reaper character and he has to avoid death while investigating more murders as it's going on it's very 90s peter jackson we can't pick brain dead i'm not a big fan of bad taste and i haven't seen meet the feebles but it is very in line with his other films it is super campy in its visual style its tone it feels like a mixture of this movie called when good ghouls go bad and like a disney channel original movie but like with like gore and creature effects and stuff like that and I really enjoy that combination. Not to mention you have Michael J. Fox as the lead in one of his last leading roles before he took a hiatus from acting due to his Parkinson's. And it's great. I think it's a very fun movie. It's not never too scary, but the acting, especially by, I think it's Jeffrey Combs, is terrific. He is insane as this FBI agent yeah. uh, uh, looking at, michael j fox is like the murderer because he he doesn't look at the supernatural victims of it all and it just it takes insanity to the next level that's what we love to see in big camp masterpieces um this was such a pleasant surprise when you showed this to me and chris brandon um it was like an, an even sleazier ghostbusters you know um it's it's like a darker, sleazier, like uh, gra- more grounded Ghostbusters, and I I love that Michael J. Fox is really good in this role. It's a very different role than you know his iconic Marty McFly, you know, um, and you know it's it's awesome to see him you know uh, bounce back and forth with the, the the fellow ghosts in the movie, um, and there's some genuine good scares too. You know, it's a with this like grim reaper death character um it's just it's such a cool concept of like this dude can actually do something spectacular but instead he does it to be a con man you know um because there really is no like the movie sort of feels like there is no like such thing as needing a ghostbuster but this guy tries to like he pretends to be one you know um and I just, I think Peter Jackson just does it amazingly. Um, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm, I agree with you, Brandon, you know, uh, not a fan of bad taste. Um, it could have been really cool, but it, it's not, yeah. but it's I lame. mean, he, it was really early. You could tell he was experimenting with his, like his directorial voice, you know, meet the feebles I think is horrid. Uh, it's disgusting and horrid. I mean, I chose it for my disgusting movies. Um, and yeah, this sort of just like, I feel like it's the natural step to brain dead. Um, so if you haven't seen the Frighteners, you got to check it out. Peter Jackson, 
stop restoring old war movies make another horror movie again <laughs> make, cool. something. make something make a narrative man. feature don't make another hobbit movie don't make the cimmerillion stay away from middle earth just make something <laughs> that is your own voice again you know so cool chris what do you think about the frighteners um yeah this was a really 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 fun film to watch uh, i think we we watched it with joey didn't we back in a you know back in when was this january 26th of 2021 it's been um, a while was joey there i feel like joey was there i think he was oh. there i feel like he was there because anyway we invi- i think we invited him i believe so night. anyway um yes Michael the J. Fox. um <laughs> it's a really inventive movie and like you said it is really fun to have like the have that character of michael j fox as like yeah this person who can do these amazing things but uses it to be a con man instead uh there is something really funny about that um peter jackson this is early peter jackson like you guys said and this is very much like and i think much like um dead alive slash brain dead um he really does show, show off his ability to like do so much with so little um and yeah like the the budget like shows but he makes use of it and doesn't doesn't use that as an excuse for poor filmmaking. He fully utilizes that budget to its fullest extent. Um, very original, very fun. I do remember there's a scene towards the end of the film where Michael J. Fox is in like this big white void, and then he he's like, oh, and then he falls back. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just sent it to the. I just sent it. You sent it to the guy. You, oh wow, you literally sent it. Wow, I was to our group chat while you were saying that. Um, but. Yeah, it's a really fun movie. Would recommend for a movie night with your friends. Uh, yeah, it's a good time. Go check it out. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Chris, let's wrap this up with your last camp horror. All righty. I am picking a film that Brandon actually took me to back in, when was this? September 9th of 2019. Uh, Brandon took me to this after seeing this a couple of uh yeah i think a day or two but uh, a little while after he he saw the film um i'm picking uh who's the writer it's a co-director matt bettinelli alpin and tyler gillett's 2019 film ready or not Mm -hmm. ready or not that's a good put ready or this is a fun one uh for anyone who doesn't know ready or not is a film starring samara weaving um who, by the way, sometimes I still look at her and I completely confuse her with Margot, Margot Robbie. Oh yeah, um, I, think it's a hair. I don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, so the story, uh, the movie is about a bride who, on the wedding night, uh, on her wedding night with her uh, seemingly level loving husband, her it takes a sinister turn when her in laws uh, insist to play a game of hide and seek. Uh, I, but things take a very drastic, un- unexpected turn and takes a very sinister turn at that. Um, yeah, it's a really fun uh, comedy slasher film in a way. Uh, it is a like you know high tension, um, but also very funny movie. Like all the characters are so like old, but also modern. Like there's a grandma who feels like she's straight out of like the Salem witch trials. But there's also, like, kids who are, like, young young people who are, like, on their phones and tweeting and stuff, like, in this movie. And um, so it's very, like, timeless in a weird way. The story is very accessible and, re- like, you feel connected to the character because, you know, she's in a perilous situation. And I'm sure anyone would, be, would feel the way she does in this situation. Um, also, just bad, yeah, badass movie. Like, the action is fantastic. The horror of it is great. The the kills as well as like the brutality of it is really well conveyed um it's also really just a great story about like relationships and you know what do you really know about someone um it's about family and prestige and you know socioeconomics and culture it's it's a it's it's a big like loaded movie but it's really grounded by a really fun story about this bride just climbing her way out of hell uh through this movie um yeah, I really enjoy this movie. I look back on this uh, very fondly. Um, I'm very curious how it would hold up on a rewatch. I actually believe that it would be raised up on a rewatch. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really fun movie. I think it's great. Uh, 
the most popular review for this movie on uh, Letterbox is just crazy rich Caucasians, which <laughs> so true. Great, so um, true. Brandon, you are a big big fan of this movie. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Um, I really love it. I think their voice is very unique. It's I, I like that it is postmodern. I think it's like we're in that last gasp. I think of postmodern horror with the new Scream reboot and that, uh, because both of these are, uh, the only things that are left commenting on the genre. I think you're you're gonna see it more so take place in uh, TV. Because all I, I we're starting to get far more serious horror films that discuss serious issues like you're looking at or Barbarian and Smile and The Night House and the less less campy stuff. So it's just like the last gasp of that, and I think it works really well. I think Samara Weaving gives a terrific performance. I like the comedy is a little spotty at points. Like at times, it does feel like it is trying to be funny when it isn't actually as funny as it thinks it is. Mm. Um, but I think it does nail the tone of it being like extremely dark and sadistic at points, but then at, at others being like being able to poke fun at class in a way that feels smart and poke fun at the genre in a way that feels smart. So yeah, I, I, I really like this movie and I always have. I took both of you guys to see it, I think, because yeah. y'all, I was I was super high on this movie, but not everybody was as high as I was, that's for sure. But we all had a good time, I th- I still think. You know, I think Chris and I had an equally good time. We both gave it three and a half. Um, it absolutely is camp. Um, I love how high concept it was, you know? Just a simple, uh, you know, uh, rich family has to sacrifice someone through a board game. Um, and I think my only perform like, my only issues with the film, my biggest issues uh lead into it being camp which is the overacting uh from the family i think samara weaving was pretty good um but everyone else i think does like a they they really paint caricatures of you know uh this really upper class you know uh white family and it plays for some good laughs but at times it could have it got a little annoying um but it's just it's a super fun game uh of you know of just like trying to figure out like oh what's what's going to happen next in this game of survival you know um and yeah uh very campy fun twist at the end as well because it this the film has you guessing you know uh are these people like really like are they in a satanic cult it's like is this cult real you know like what's going to happen uh if you know the sacrifice doesn't go through and it, it pays off pretty well at the end i would say um, mm-hmm. definitely does very unexpected yeah. but also very like satisfying super satisfying um yeah i just couldn't stop laughing that's all yeah it was pretty good um yeah all right these are some great oh this is going to be a tough Ass. yeah we tur- we all turned out pretty good lists yeah fuck like all i right. feel like all three all three of us are final stack worthy yeah all of these i would i would like include all of these on final stack so all right let's do that let's show yeah, the nine, nine films, nine movies, fuck nine films. Stack. let's do it <laughs> uh no so before we figure out our final stack let's run down all of our films brand oh uh, no i'll start uh not you uh sorry <laughs> Stop I'm, messing I'm, up your order. I'm, oh I'm, my god. I'm, now I'm now I'm just like I felt so bad for skipping you. I skipped myself. Um all right. My films are Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Basket Case, and Old. Brandon, what are yours? Mine are Leprechaun 3, The Frighteners, and The Final Girls. That's what you get, Ethan. Okay, I deserve that. I deserve that. Chris, your stack. Mine were Young Frankenstein, House of Wax, and Ready or Not. Okay. Shit, this one's hard. <laughs> um does everyone have one on their list that they would put forward more than the others? Yes. I think Leprechaun 3 for me. What's yours, Ethan? Killer or Frighteners. I would, I would do Killer Clowns. I would do Young Frankenstein. Yeah. 
I wonder if there's a is there like a through line between the three selections we have that would like unite them well? I think we should like choose different worlds of horror. You know what I mean? Um I think I think we should choose the frighteners for supernatural uh killer clowns for sort of science fiction horror. Um I love Young Frankenstein. Um but I could also do Ready or Not, you know, for sort of uh slasher horror, you know. Um mm. but we could also do Young Frankenstein for monster for just classic monster, you know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Mm. Ah. Young Frankenstein for classic monster. We don't really have that representation here, do we? Yeah. So that might be good. Uh, what eras do these take place in? Um, 90s, so like a regular period piece for the Frighteners. I mean, Young Frankenstein is a 70s film, but it you know takes place, you know, in the God knows what <laughs> dem the 30s. Days. Well, it, 30s, 1800s. it's supposed to look like it's made in the 30s, but it really, it's the, it's like, when, was it written in the 1500s? I think, I think I it was written in the 1800s. I don't no know. Frankenstein. I, don't, I wasn't there. I don't, I don't know. I just work here, man. It's okay. It's okay. Here, mm. have, a can- here have a candy. But I, I, ready or not for Slasher, that works too. If yeah. we're not using the Leprechaun. Which... I mean, I'm fine with either. I'm just, I'm just presenting options. Uh. I feel like Leprechaun and Killer Clowns are pretty similar, which is my only. Yeah, opinion. I agree. I agree from what you pitched. Um, so I'll I'll go with Frighteners just because we've already used it before, but also I think it works perfectly for camp horror and it's a little bit more serious. Yeah. But even if it, even if it has campiness, like it it balances the seriousness well. Mm-hmm. Should we like? Okay, so if that's locked in, and then Killer Clowns is locked in. Chris, what do you want from your list? Yeah, I'm fine with yeah. any of yours, Chris. I'm just running through the options here, you know? It's either, it's def, it's either Young Frankenstein or Ready or Not. Um, so it's basically either older or more contemporary. <sighs> yeah, if we want to go with, like, a historical pick of, like, one of the first films that people really consider as camp. I mean, I think people would consider, like, old 30s films as camp, like Bride of Frankenstein stuff. People would say that's camp. Um but maybe Mel Brooks really brought it into the spotlight, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's the only movie that's commenting on itself. Yeah. Right? Because your Killer Clowns doesn't comment on itself, does it? It certainly, it certainly has horror comedy elements, but I don't think it comments on itself. Yeah, because like, I feel like with if there's a postmodernism, the first postmodernist horror comedy which with young frankenstein and honestly if we're not leaning too heavily into horror here you know we could structure it like that yeah and or tonally what would work in a three film marathon because like i think the frighteners could start it Mm -hmm. and then we roll into something a little bit more comedic from there with killer clowns i would assume yeah and then we end with young frankenstein as like the you know reverse chronological sort of thing that i'd be down with that it's some i think it gets a bit more and more self-aware once you get through Mm. it you know that's true i like that should we do it yeah Yeah. i think hit it all righty this is stacks official camp horror final stack all these are great movies. Um, let's run it down, starting with Brandon. What is our first film on this final stack? Our first film is the Peter Jackson film, The Frighteners. Uh, not so meta work, look at the horror feature, but definitely a campy depiction of the supernatural. It has horror elements, but it also is at times very funny. It's depiction of the afterlife. We got The Frighteners. And our second film nice. is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, a punked out, poppy, crazy horror comedy from the 1980s that show these disgusting 
scary looking clowns up to no good all these shenanigans in the small town um if you're looking for good you know horror makeup effects that sort of you know come hand in hand with 80s camp horror uh you've come to the right place with killer clowns um just you know have fun with this one you'll dig it killer clowns from outer space chris cool and our final film is mel brooks's 1974 horror comedy classic young frankenstein a wonderfully uh funny but also uh horror Hori, hor, hori, horrifying, hori, <laughs> horrifying, <laughs> uh, horrifying um, film about a, the grandchild of uh, Doctor Victor von Frankenstein. Uh, just a fantastically uh, executed slapstick and intelligent uh, um, meta horror film. Uh, yeah, one of the classics of the of the era, and just an all around recommend from me. And there we have it, everybody. Thus ends our first episode of Stacked in the 2022 Halloweenathon. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And, uh, you know, if you want to look at more Halloweenathon episodes, feel free to check out our ones from years past. And if you have one that you, a topic that you really want us to discuss, let us know in the comments or tell us on Twitter. You know, uh, the more and more Halloweenathon episodes we do, I feel like we got to get more and more creative with uh, the topics here, you know. So, uh, look forward to some more creative topics from us, and uh, happy October, everybody. Have a good month. Oogity boogity, oogity boogity. Bye, guys. Oogity boogity, goobity, goobity. All right. I'm Bill Cosby. No!